Good evening. We are Dresses and Salted Pretzels of Sports Life Talk South, and this is episode 21, Up the Hill. And sorry that Ms. El Paso was unable to be here this evening. She just got back from an epic ski trip, shredding that gnar, as the kids say these days. And however, she did write you a little poem. So I'm going to go ahead and read it for you all. Dallas and Niners go up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Dallas fell down and broke his cowboy hat and the Steelers came tumbling after. She was inspired by the wild card games this weekend. And so that is where Up the Hill, our 21st episode comes from. 21. 21. So basically after this. We're going to, what can we do? Drink. You can gamble at 18, or do you have to be 21? I think you have to be 21. You have to be at 21. So, yeah. So, after this, we're going to go drink and gamble. Yeah. Speaking of drinking. And gambling. Brittany's on that water again. Yeah. And I've got a little vino from Gloria Ferrer. It is a Pinot Noir Reserve. It's delicious. Uh, however, that does not mean that we are going to ignore our sponsors, Southern Star Brewery. So thank you so much for sponsoring us. And I will make sure to get back on that Southern Star tip next week. I need more beer from them. Yes. I uh, possibly drank Brittany's six pack that was supposed to go to her. So we've got a lot of beer coming our way, though. We've got a lot of stuff coming up that we're going to need beer for. Aside just from casual drinking, so. Yeah. Why don't we tell them about what we've got? Give them some announcements. Oh, that's a good idea. All right. So first up, that there will not necessarily be a case of beer involved. Um, We have an exciting announcement. If you've watched the last few episodes, you've heard us talk about the Bakari Foundation. And you have also heard us talk about how the last Tuesday of every month, we are going to have guest hosts. So those guest hosts are going to be primarily Instagram and podcast friends that have had us on their show. Uh, But we definitely want to kick it off with our charity that we support. So the Bakari Foundation will be joining us next Tuesday. You cannot miss that. We are definitely going to have Miss Jill and PJ and possibly Mr. Phil on. So the whole Bakari Foundation family will be on next week. Do not miss that episode. And then what's happening in Katy this weekend? Live Strangers, right? <laughs> That's right. We also have Live Strangers Saturday at Jack's Grill in Katy, Texas from 6 to 9 p.m. Do not miss that. We have talked about Great Plate Hospitality before from Paul Miller. This is one of his restaurants in the Union Kitchen, and Katie is actually right across uh, the way as well. It is going to be a rocking good time. It's going to be a little chilly, but we will have the garage door open with the heaters, and the band will be facing the restaurant on the inside, so everybody else will be able to stay warm, except for the band. <laughs> well, they'll be playing. Yeah, they should be able to warm up. I know that they've got some gloves, cut out the fingers and whatnot, so... Yes, and and we do have Ms. El Paso on the line. So she said she is definitely hitting that up Saturday evening. It is not just rock and roll and drinks. You can have dinner as well. So get there early, grab a table, because I know it is going to be packed. And then also this weekend here in Houston. Oh, I want to go. It's like Brittany's dream. Um, Elton John is playing at the Toyota Center on Friday and on Saturday this weekend and this is the second time that he has played in Houston in the past three years I believe I think it was was maybe 2019 actually the last time he was here for his farewell tour well he's back so they all do that I know George Strait has (laughs) said he's not gonna play I don't know the rodeo a hundred times is my last rodeo it's gonna be my last tour the last cowboy rides away here we are still listening to him always comes back so because we don't have Ms. El Paso here to keep us in line we're going totally rogue tonight. Um, we are just going to talk about the segments as we feel that they come up. And I think that we should go ahead and talk about the games this weekend. Absolutely. Which was your favorite one to watch? Well, kind of the Dallas <laughs> game. 
I'm sorry for my friends that are Cowboys fans, but I always love to see that happen. Yes. If you are not a Cowboys fan, you always love seeing the Cowboys lose. So we actually had a great time on Across the Pond last week. Uh, they had us on their show. Brittany and I were there. And we had the privilege and fun time of being able to put in our picks for who is going to win the wild card race here. And Brittany picked her own, but I had write-in votes from the fans. And I suck too. Well, <laughs> let me tell you. It's terrible. The fans, well, they're always going to pick their team. Always. And they're generally going to get it wrong. So out of six games we had one fan that got it right and that was the bills mafia so congratulations to aaron doherty maybe we should get aaron a shirt okay let's get aaron a shirt okay aaron we are going to get you a sports life talk t-shirt for your win because you are the only fan that guessed it right including me because i took the cardinals by two and that wasn't even close no um, I think maybe OBJ was still on the hype from the baby shower a couple weeks before. So OBJ is expecting a little baby. And actually the last, the Saturday right before his regular season, they had a, a baby shower for the baby. And I think they won that game too. So he's just an excited dad out there showing off right now. Who's the mom? I don't remember her name. They've been dating. They were dating whenever. They found out that she was pregnant, but um, our mascot's growling at us right now. <laughs> he, he's telling Brittany to pick him up. He's yeah. like, what are they doing with these lights and on TV? So anyway, Ms. El Paso, sorry your Raiders lost. You were not the right-in vote for that. Our right-in vote for that was Jeff from Hammer House, and he had the Raiders by eight. Brittany also picked the Raiders by eight. So double losers there on that one. Uh, what was what was the one, you know, what was the game that most surprised you? I definitely had the Cowboys winning. So that one was tough. I had the Cardinals winning. I lost that one as well. Um, in fact, I am second to last place on my ESPN picks from Goodfellas and Bad Girls picks on ESPN, which are actually Coach is playing with us as well. So our producer is playing. I'm seven and eight. I'm not last place, but I'm second to last place. So there is actually someone that was worse at their picks than I was. I was kind of trying to go against the grain. You know, it's one of those things where it tells you the percentages of most likely, who's most likely to win or who's most likely to um, have the most passing yards or the most rushing yards. And so I did go against that on, on some of our things there. There we go. Here's the mascot. <laughs> Mr. Yoda is here. He didn't want to be he didn't want to be left out. No, he was totally over there growling at us. <laughs> so we we've got our third uh our third co-host. That's right. Everyone, Yoda, our mascot. I love him. Look at him looking at me. <laughs> okay. Okay, what was your favorite game? Oh man. Um favorite game. I would say none at all, actually. But I did see love seeing Joe Burr. I mean, I, I wanted the Raiders, so Ms. El Paso, yeah. don't, don't get mad. I, I actually wanted the Raiders to win, but I also liked seeing Joe Burrow get that win. That was a great game. That was actually. really cool. And that was a really, really good game. Yeah. Um, 49ers, Cowboys was super exciting at the end. Yep. That was... I think we were at a bar and everybody was like, wait a second, what just happened? Wait, no, it's done. It's actually done. They didn't, they didn't get the snap out on time. And then Jerry Jones actually came out and said that the game was not lost on the last play that they lost the game. Well, before the last play, so I'm like, <laughs> Jerry Jones throwing some major shade. It's like, we just lost the game in the first quarter. Yeah. They had tons of penalties. Um, and it wasn't one of those penalties like at the Bears Steelers game where the refs were completely messed up. They were actual penalties. So I'm I'm sure that we'll definitely have some Cowboys fans weighing in on here. Or if they watch it recorded, we're gonna get a lot of hate mail later, but that's all right. It's okay. Um 
Yeah, so very excited about the next uh, games coming up this week. We did not pick the games, but we will definitely throw something on Instagram so you can see that between the three of us who we're picking, and we will get that done before the games start. And that's about it for me for the wild card. Okay, so what I what game I liked the most um, was the Raiders Bengals game. I did pick the Raiders, um, but being from Ohio, I always love to see you know see our home state teams win. The game that I was most surprised about was the Eagles and Buccaneers. I just that was just <laughs> that was a big de- like thirteen what wait, you know thirty one to fifteen right yeah. so. My cousin, I absolutely loved seeing seeing it. But taught me a couple of years ago when the Bears were in the wild card and they were playing. Oh yeah, uh, Brady. She was like, "I mean, I'm with you, Elaine. I want to choose the Bears too, but you'd never bet against Tom Brady." No, you said that all day too. I've and been then... saying that. Like, don't bet. A, you don't bet against Tom Brady. I don't care what team he's playing for. Never <laughs> bet against Tom Brady. <laughs> You're gonna lose every single time. But this next one, I don't know. I might be betting against Tom Brady the next matchup. So we'll see. Um, all right. You ready for fact check against the glass? Yeah, let's do it. Go first. All right. I'll go first. Okay. So our fact check against the glass this week is in regards to the teams that played in the wild card. So we had to pick a team and a fact about that team. So my fact that I chose has to do with Houston, Texas, who are not in the playoffs at all. In fact, I believe they had the worst record out of any team this year. Um, But it does have to do with the Bills. So the greatest comeback of all time belongs to the Buffalo Bills in 1993 when they played against the Houston Oilers. The quarterback for the Houston Oilers was Warren Moon, awesome guy, great quarterback, and he was leading the entire game until the end when Frank Rich came back and beat the Houston Oilers. So at halftime, the Oilers were up 28 to 3, and then after halftime, they went to 35 to 3. So the Bills had to overcome a 32-point deficit just tied. And they ended up winning the game 41 to 38. So that is actually the largest and the greatest comeback in NFL. And I believe also college football. I will have to check that out. But yeah, congratulations to the Bills Mafia. Um, Not only on your win for the wild card, but oh, hey, what's up, Matt? Hi, Matteo. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, we are just hitting up our fact check against the glass. So it is Brittany's. Okay, so I have a fact about Kansas City Chiefs. This is something that I didn't know. You guys might know it. But um, when the franchise was first granted in uh, 1959, it was Dallas Texans. That was their name. The Kansas City Chiefs were called the Dallas Texans. Yeah. But were they in Kansas City? They're in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it was a move. Yeah, it was a move. Okay. So it moved that and changed the name in 1963. 1963. So do you think we can find some Dallas Texans throwback gear? I hope so. That would be awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of far back. Start scouring the internet, guys, and find us a Dallas Texans throwback gear. I want some. I definitely would wear that. So, fact check against the glass. We have the Buffalo Bills having the greatest comeback against the Houston Oilers of all time. And the Dallas Texans that are now the Kansas City Chiefs. I tell you what. Mahomes, I, I, that guy. I like watching him play. I love watching him play. But you know what? I feel like the wild plays and the -the across-the-body throws – are going to catch up with him. Like, I mean, definitely that's what won them the game um, this past weekend, but it concerns me. I love watching that. It's so exciting to watch, but I don't know. 
worries me that they can't keep that up. However, we all know that Kansas City started off with the offense not so hot at the beginning of the years. Coaches figured it out, and now you see what they're doing. They're moving on. All right. So, well, it is perfect timing for Matt. Our friend Matt, diehard Cowboys fan, is on the line, everyone. And in our Goodfellas and Bad Girls chat group, there's a lot of trolling going on with the Cowboys right now. There's a lot of memes. There's a lot of hate. Uh, however, there I would say there's, what, three Cowboys fans out of ten people playing. So, you know, they can band together. I'm the only Bears fan that's playing. Misty, Ms. El Paso is the only um, Raiders fan that's playing. So, obviously, nobody's talking ish to us because we didn't – well, Raiders lost, but Bears didn't even make the playoffs. So, <laughs> you guys can bring all the hate my way. I'll take it. Anyway. So this player anthem goes out to our ESPN Goodfellas and Bad Girls. I don't know what it's called. Group, I guess. <laughs> and that player anthem is by Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings from their album, Waylon and Willie, 1978 to go along with the theme of trolling the Cowboys fans. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be Cowboys. Or mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be Cowboys fans. <laughs> oh, so Mateo, that was specifically for you, our dear friend. Um, he's an amazing person, Matt is. So we don't want to give him too much hate. And I actually was not throwing out the memes on the group chat, but I couldn't pass up this one because, you know, mamas don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. And it's an absolute classic. I don't care what type of music you listen to. Everyone knows that song. Throwing it back to 1978, Waylon and Willie. And, uh, yeah, it's the perfect. Yeah, see, Ms. El Paso said it is the it is. perfect song. It is. For them so i'm gonna listen to that this evening i already have listened to it i'm gonna listen to it again all right so normally like i said we are going completely out of order today <laughs> but we saved celebrity gossip for last and ms el paso i hope that we make you proud because this is your tried and true beautiful segment that you put on for us and celebrity gossip today is another hashtag free Britney movement. Um, not this Britney, the That's actual, but also free Britney. We have a guy on Instagram that always tags her in any Britney video and says free, but <laughs> hashtag free Britney Owen. Um, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it is good. We share our stuff sometimes. So if you follow us on Instagram, definitely check that out. So hashtag free Britney, um, her little sister, Jamie Lynn Spears has come out with a book called things I should have said. And she has said in the press that this book is only about her. It's not about her sister. However, there are quite a few areas in the book where all she does is talk about Britney Spears. So, hey there, across the pond. Yes. We're, we're together just because of you. Yes, we're together. It's because of you. We talked about you earlier in the segment and about the wild card pits and picks and how fans should never be allowed to pick. Um, so we'll definitely recap that and uh, shoot you a, a little bit of that video. But, okay, Jamie Lynn Spears, Britney's younger sister, has been on every show imaginable promoting her new book. And there is a passage in the book where she says that Britney locked her in a room with a knife and she was afraid for her life. A reporter then asked her, if this book isn't about Britney, why are quite a few of your stories in the book about Britney? And she said, well, I was a young kid and I was very scared and I was too scared to even bring it up as a child because my sister was famous and I thought that I would get in trouble. And Britney then <laughs> clapped back on Twitter, called her sister a scumbag, which I love that word. We've actually been... We've been called scumbags before. We have. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was a White Sox fan that was trolling us on Instagram. He called us a bunch of a scumbags, and then he unfollowed us. So <laughs> if more of you White Sox fans want to unfollow us, go right ahead. <laughs> scumbags. Scumbags. Except for Jesse, She's cool. Um, anyway, so yeah. So Brittany clapped back on Twitter, and she said that she was extremely disappointed in her. She never understood the meaning of low, lower, and lowest until Jamie Lynn wrote this. She also, though, said that this was unlike her sister and, you know, how much, how disappointed she was. So it's somewhat contradicting statements by Brittany um, because she talks about how it's unlike her sister, but then calls her a scumbag. She's being a scumbag. Would you ever, how many times have you called your brother The a only reason people are going to buy that is because there's stories about Brittany and no one gives a shit about Jamie Lynn's yeah, ears. That's exactly right. No one cares. That is exactly right. Hey, Ken, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, how can the story, first of all, touting that the story isn't about your sister, it's about you and your life, when the only reason you have the book deal is because your sister is famous? Exactly. Obviously, and your childhood involves your siblings and your parents. So if she's talking about herself, she's going to be talking about her sister. I think if she just came out and said, like, this is about my life growing up, living in the shadow of Britney Spears, people would have probably taken it a lot better. But yeah, free Britney fans are up in arms about Jamie Lynn Spears and her new book. All right. We also have one more bit for celebrity gossip, which also puts us in our player hater. To the player hater. <laughs> um, I'm already like, I feel a, a, a few different ways about this just because the guy obviously has mental issues. Um, but Cleveland Browns defensive lineman Malik McDowell was caught yesterday completely naked in the streets and was arrested. Now, in 2019, he also spent 66 days in jail for... DUI. A DUI, drinking and driving. And he accosted the policeman in the... So he pulled over to the gas station. They got out trying to arrest him. He started fighting the policemen. He started fighting the policemen after they tased him running naked through the streets. And he has had two other incidents. Um, in 2017 in Michigan, he also got, I believe, a DUI. Disorderly and conduct. Disorderly conduct was it? Okay. One was disorderly conduct. Yeah. And one was He's DUI. had quite a few, quite a few incidences with the police. Uh, but this one specifically this week, he was near a school. In fact, he was like, I think trying to enter the early learning, it was early learning facility and completely nude in Florida running around. TMZ has the video. Yes. So if you would like to see that, TMZ has a video. As Ms. El Paso said, they need to get him help. Like, for all these multiple issues that he has had, it is clear that they need to get him help. Um, yeah, Ken also mentioned that he was abusing a cop. So he was not just exposing himself, Ken. He was naked. Like, it wasn't showing a little bit of this or showing a little bit of that type Mardi Gras situation. He was a hundred percent nude. Um, he definitely was fighting the cops back he and shoes on. took one of the cops out. You know, I hope he had socks on. No. I didn't watch the video because I actually didn't want to see the naked man running around. Maybe it'll be a little nighttime video. I'm gonna have to look. Um, but I don't know that he had shoes on. I hope he had socks on because that would be even better. But yeah, so not only is it celebrity gossip for you all, but also player hater. Um, these teams keep signing him. He played for Seattle. He ha he played 14 games with the Cleveland Browns this year. And no, no socks, no shoes. All right, there you go. No socks, no shoes, no service. But I also tend to think in your parents live in Florida. My parents live in Florida half the year. Brittany's parents have moved 100% full-time to Florida. 
my parents are there. They're snowbirds. So they're, they're six months out of the year, but this is the only kind of ish that happens in Florida. I know. Remember when the kid killed those people and was like eating them? I mean, oh, no, I, that was by my parents and the kid's dad lived in the same neighborhood as my parents. I follow Florida man on Instagram. <laughs> it is oh, nonstop. It is nonstop entertainment. <laughs> I mean, it's like middle class fancy, you know, but it's called Florida Band. Okay. And there are all kinds of wild, wild things that happen in Florida. Um, yeah, there's also the thing where you can do on the internet where you type in your birthday and then Florida Man. And then there is always something weird and crazy that comes up. Google it. Try it. In fact, everybody on the chat do it right now. I want to see what your Florida Man is. I think my mom's watching us right now. Your mom is. Tell her, Google her birthday and Florida man, and text you what comes up. Like mom, <laughs> she just heard that. <laughs> because this is what she texts me. What'd she say? <laughs> <laughs> we can't repeat that. All I have to say to that, Miss Vicky, well, is all hail. All hail. She she did say that. Florida's really glad that OJ didn't come there. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was a better moment. Where does he live now? California still? No. I don't know either. Anyway, so, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of stuff also going on with the Kardashians, but we promised Ms. El Paso that we would save that for her. And I have no idea what's going on with them, so. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What does Ken say? There's been some crazy Houston stories coming out lately. Might want to get ahead of it. <laughs> We're fine with it. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, here's the thing. I don't watch the local news in any city that I go to because if you did, you would not leave your house. So my friend Leslie was here from Chicago this past weekend. She came Wednesday through Monday. And for some reason, the local news came on. And she's like, man, Houston's just as bad as Chicago. I'm like. No, it's not. But yes, like it doesn't matter what city you go to. If you're watching the local news, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, watching the local news, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not going out. I'm not going out here. It's, so yeah, it's violence everywhere. Violence everywhere. Just don't, just don't go to the south side of Chicago, and you'll be good. All right. Do we have anything going on this weekend since we started with our announcements? Well, yeah. So Elton John. And... Maybe. Somebody's Life strangers birthday on Monday. It is. It it's is Monday? someone's birthday. Someone very, very, very special's birthday on Monday. And she also has a title. Like Queen Vicky All Hail. She has a title. She's possibly won a few pageants in her day. So we want to wish a very, very, very happy birthday to Ms. El Paso. And we will be celebrating with her at McIntyre's downtown on Sunday, watching the games. I saw her invite. There's like 30 people that have accepted. So we'll definitely be going live on Dresses and Salted Pretzels. And I hope she'll be going live on Ms. El Paso. So do not forget to check that out. We cannot wait to celebrate your birthday with you, Ms. El Paso. If you would have been on here, we would have sang to you, but considering that it's just the two of us, we'll save that. What if we can sing it next Tuesday? We'll sing it next Tuesday. Like a belated. Yeah. All right. And then also, oh, wait. Okay. We have a Florida man before we go. All right. So Matt's birthday is May 22nd, and Florida man climbs on playground equipment and shouted a lewd term to children so that's what happened on matt's birthday i gotta look that up <laughs> i gotta get mine uh, oh across the pond's telling us this thing you don't you don't want to hear that uh, i got i got a little something in my throat but um and then ken miss el paso you see that planning to hit a trip up to miss el paso's hometown of el paso texas gonna have to hit it up so anyway that is it for our show tonight i want to make sure that you all follow Sports Life Talk on Instagram and on YouTube. It is not just us 
on Sports Life Talk on YouTube. We have Sports Life Talk on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. And also You Got Next, which is a fantastic recorded show where they interview coaches, athletes, um, anyone who is doing great, awesome things in the sports world. So make sure and check that out. Please follow Dresses and Salted Pretzels on Instagram. Follow Live Music HTX on Instagram, and you'll be able to see all the live stranger stuff there. And then also Ms. El Paso. And thank you for joining us. We had a great time. Oh,